This is the Behringer Ultra Gain Digital ADA 8200 and it is an ADAT expander rack. And despite what it says on the box, ADAT audio interface, this is not an audio interface in the traditional sense and it cannot connect directly to your computer. It can only connect to another device via ADAT. So the way you typically use this device is you take a traditional USB audio interface like this UMC1820 and then you connect the UltraGain Digital to the USB interface using an optical TOSLink cable like that. And then the inputs and outputs on the UltraGain Digital will appear as additional inputs and outputs on the USB host device being used by your door. Okay, here's the front of the unit working across from left to right and the build quality is pretty good for the money it's solid I like little touches like the stainless steel hex bolts holding in the XLR sockets and of course behind those XLR sockets there are the Midas preamps that Behringer uses on all its stuff now and they're really good little preamps for the money actually really nice sounding I've used them extensively on the UMC 1820 and for the money they're great little preamps and there's no reason with a device like this that you can't deliver really good quality recordings. If we look at those um, sections in more detail, every preamp section has a electronically balanced XLR mic and quarter inch tip ring sleeve input, uh, a signal and clip indicator lamp and a gain control to adjust the input of either the mic or quarter inch line input and there are eight of those mic line preamps across the front of the unit. Over on the right, the master section, we've got the on off switch and the phantom power on off that supplies phantom power to all inputs and then the sync master and locked indicators and they'll illuminate differently depending whether the unit is working as a master or slave device. Around at the back there's the power socket and then the digital in out section. There's your ADAT input and output sockets and each of them has a little hinged door that retracts when you plug in the TOSLink cable and that door is to prevent dust and other gunk getting into the optical connecting sockets inside. Okay and then over here is the sync section. Um, there's a BNC word clock connector and then the switching. Now if the unit is working as a slave it can either sync to word clock in from that BNC connector there or the way most people will use it it can take sync via the ADAT input on the digital input output section but if the unit is being used as the master device then you can choose whether you're running the session in either 44.1 or 48k okay and that's the sync section and then the rest of the back is eight XLR balanced or unbalanced line outputs. And that's the back of the unit. Here's the bench setup. We've got a laptop running Logic. And we've got a couple of dynamic mics there on a stereo bar and they are connected to the two audio interfaces. One of the mics is plugged into input one on the UMC1820 and one of the mics is plugged into input one on the ADA8200. Okay, so round at the back, this is going to be the master, this is going to be the slave. We take a TOSLink cable from the ADAT output of the master to the ADAT input of the slave and we switch the slave switch to the ADAT in position. Okay, now think about it though. The UltraGain Digital acting as a slave device still has to send its audio streams to the master USB audio interface device so that the inputs and outputs of the UltraGain Digital appear as additional inputs and outputs on this USB interface when it's connected to the door. So we have to have a second TOS link cable connected from the ADAT output of the slave device to the ADAT input of the master device and this carries the audio streams from the slave to the master. And this green one carries the sync from the master to the slave. 
Okay, round at the front, let's power them up. And the master device, we have to switch the optical in out to ADAT to enable the ADAT outputs on this so it can send sync out to the UltraGain Digital as the slave. Boom. And as soon as we switch this ADAT on, this unit can send sync to this and this becomes sync locked. So UltraGain Digital is now sync locked to the USB interface. Okay, and then at the other end, we just check that we've got a good mic signal for input one on this and for input one on that. And now we can go to Logic. Okay, so in the door now, and I happen to be using Logic, but this would be the same for Cubase or any other door. We go to the part of the door where we assign our audio interface and we set that as usual. In the case of Logic, we do that under Preferences Audio, and there we can see the USB audio interface installed as the audio device, the UMC1820. And it happens to have it in our buffer size of 64 samples, right? So that is set. And then we look at an audio track here and look at the possible inputs. And we can have any of 18 possible inputs coming into this track. Now input one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, they're the first eight mic line inputs on the UMC1820, the USB audio interface. Inputs nine and 10 are the left, right, SP, diff, digital inputs on the UMC1820 USB audio interface. And then after that, inputs 11 to 18 are the eight mic line preamps on the ADA 8200. Okay, so this first audio track I'm going to assign to input one, which is the first input on the UMC 1820. Then I'll make a second audio track, right? And I'll go to its possible inputs and I'm going to assign it to input 11, which is the first input on the ADA 8200. Boom, like that. Okay. And if we put both their input monitors on, like that, we can see when I snap my fingers by the mics, they're both receiving. Input one from the UMC1820 is receiving, and input one on the ADA8200 is receiving. So now what I'll do is I'll put them both into record mode. Okay, and then let's see uh, if we can record something on both mics at the same time. In other words, both audio interfaces are sending their inputs to the door. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour That's when my love comes tumbling down There we are. Let's have a listen to what we recorded, but take the record inputs off. Here we go. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour That's when my love comes tumbling down Yeah, and it's working for 100% So that's how you do it if you want the USB interface to be the master and the Ultra Gain Digital to be the slave You have to use two ADAT cables between the two devices One cable to go from the output of this to the input of this for the sync and another one to go from the output of this to the input of this to provide the audio streams between here and here. Okay. So the other way round now, the UltraGain Digital is the master and the USB interface is the slave. And now we only need a single Toslink cable connected from the ADAT output of the master to the ADAT input of the slave. And this single Toslink cable will carry the audio streams and the sync from the master to the slave device. And now we just put our switch on the ADA8000 to the master position, because it's now behaving as the master. And we choose whether we want to run the session at 44.1 or 48k. And I'm going to put it on 44.1. OK, so now... The other way round with the ADA 8200 working as the master. We go to the first audio track and it's assigned to receive on input one, the first input from the USB device, the UMC 1820. 
we go to the second track and it's assigned to input 11, the first input on the ADA 8200. See, it doesn't matter whether the UMC1820 USB audio interface is the master or the UltraGain Digital ADA8200 is the master. In either case, the input's order will always be the same. You first, you get the first eight inputs on the UMC1820, then the SPDIF left-right input, 9 and 10, on the UMC1820, and then finally the eight mic line preamps from the digital ADA8200 on ADAT. And they're always in that order, whether the USB device or the ADAT device is the master, because it's the USB device that is plugged into the door, into the computer. Okay. So anyway, we've got input, we've got audio track one assigned to input one, the first input on the USB audio interface, and we've got audio track two assigned to input 11, the first mic line input on the ADA8200, and it's the same as last time when the uh, when the USB device was the the master. Okay, it just behaves exactly the same. So put both tracks into record. We'll do another quick test. Here we go. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour. It's when my love comes tumbling down. Getting a bit retro there with the old vocals uh, choice, but uh, here we go. Let's set them both out of record. Have a little playback of that, and sure enough. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour. Oh, sorry, I didn't take that one out of record. And sure enough. I'm gonna wait till the midnight hour. It's when my love comes tumbling down. And that's how you do it the other way round. If you want the Ultra Gain Digital to be the master and the USB interface to be the slave, then you only need one Toslink cable which will go from the master to the slave here. And it will carry the audio streams to the USB interface from the ADA8200. And it will carry the audio sync as well. And there you go. That's how you do that. So, the Behringer ADA8200 Ultra Gain Digital. Um, and if we look at some different configurations, um, a Behringer UMC1820 USB audio interface plus a Behringer ADA8200 Ultra Gain Digital ADAT rack and a budget Amazon Toslink cable would be one of the cheapest solutions to get 16 good quality mic line preamps into your door. And each of those 16 mic line pre's would be a Midas designed quite decent little preamp. And the total cost for that would be approximately 420 British pounds, 489 euros or 442 American dollars at today's date. If you need even more inputs then an RME Digiface USB costing 385 at today's prices and then either three or four ADA8200 units at £189 each at today's cost would give you either 24 or 32 mic line inputs for a cost of 952 British pounds for 24 inputs and 1141 British pounds for 32 inputs. And if you want more information on getting lots of inputs into your door, then check the description below where you'll find links to a previous video I made, which has been incredibly popular with over 116,000 views, which really goes into detail about how to get lots of inputs into your door. So check that out for more information. So there it is, the Ultracane Digital ADA8200, which if you don't know is the upgraded newer version of the older ADA8000 from some years back. It's got nice MyDash preamps as I said, they're perfectly good. The converters on this have been upgraded from the previous version, so you're getting slightly better spec. And while this is a budget sub 200 British pounds unit, it does turn out really good quality results. So there's no reason whatsoever that you can't put one of these together with some budget mics and turn out a really good quality album recording. And incidentally, if you want to learn how to record a band, then look in the description below where you'll find a link to a playlist of ongoing videos showing the entire process to record, mix and master a new album for a London band, which I'm doing at the moment. 
And in those video tutorials, I'm using the UMC1820 and the ADA8200 configuration that you've just seen in this video, along with a selection of budget microphones. So check that out if you're a beginner to all this and you want to learn how to record a band to a really good standard using budget equipment. Okay, so I hope all that's been informative for you. Uh, any questions or comments, please put them below. And, um, of course, subscribe. Subscribe and stick on the old notifications. I'm getting back into making videos now, so there's lots of content coming down the pipe. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I'll see you for more videos soon.